All right, well, good morning, everyone good morning. at Shandon Assembly of God. We are here, and uh, yeah, Jesus supplied it all, and whatever we need, we have to reach out and receive. So whatever you need today, reach out and receive, whether it's healing, comfort, peace, um, strength, whatever you need, reach out and receive. Amen? Amen. Because he's, he's moving to and fro by the power of his Holy Spirit. He's ever, he's an ever, ever faithful friend who sticks closer than anyone in this entire world. He's uh, the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. 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 Can you say another amen? Amen. 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 Uh, do you have anybody have any praise reports? I do. I um. Anyway, I was listening to um, James Warner Wallace, who is a apologist that's also a detective guy. Anyway, I love listening to some of those guys because they they bring in facts and things that just so uphold what the Bible says, and that it. it it's just fun. It's fun to see, oh yeah, see? God did think everything all the way through. Um, you know, he recently he was talking about what, why Jesus came at the time he came and what was going on in the world at the specific time that Jesus chose to come to earth and, and um, everything that was set in place to make that happen and impacts the biggest part of the world that it could. and. It was just, it was really cool about, you know, Rome and how the Roman Empire had increased and the roads and the communication and, and all that was all set. And it was all set for Jesus to come. It, it, it's just delightful. And I, I just praise God for that. It all connects together. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The Romans built the roads, the Greeks conquered, and they brought the language kind of mm -hmm. yeah. connected all the languages. Yeah. And the lettering and the written language hadn't developed until that time so that, you know, so that everything could be written down and communicated better. And it, it's just another, another, um, I don't know, explanation mark that God is God. And yeah. he's got everything figured out. He does. He created it. Wonderful. <laughs> he flung the stars and the heavens and yeah. created the earth. He's got it. Everything's connected. And and then we have all our problems down here. I think he can work in our problems mm -hmm. and figure that out too. It's a little too much for us, but if we, yeah. we can give it to him, he will do we do what we can do he'll do what we can't do amen yes <laughs> is any any more i just i praise him for so many things i he's blessed me in so many ways but i praise him he might be at church this morning uh, so i praise him. god yes. yes so thankful you're here and sunny and everyone yeah yes yeah. mm, it's a tough choice natalie <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so this week has been a really neat week for us. We, Good. we, um, long story short, met this lady in the grocery store. Her name's Nancy. She needs to move her mother. She came down for vacation, found her mother in a very bad situation, oh, no. and she needs to spend her vacation moving her mother back to Washington with her. So she doesn't know anybody in the area. Her nearest sister lives in Arizona. Hmm. And... She's, you know, wondering what am, how am I going to do this? You know, she's, she's, you know, not a young lady. She's not really old, but she's not really young either. Oh, yeah, Christine, but she came from Arizona. Oh. And anyway, we run into her in the grocery store. We just start talking because she sees my hat, my don't tread on me hat. Mm -hmm. And she's, she's like the chairwoman of the Republican Party up there or something like that. Good for her. Yeah, and I don't know if she's the chairwoman, but she's, but some, she's somebody. Yeah, she's somebody up there, and uh, and she sees my hat. And she's like, "Oh, I like your hat." And so we just start talking, and I ask her if she needs prayer, and she's just like, "It's not her hat. It's not her head." You know, she she's got this like she's got a very frazzled look about her, yeah. and 
and she she tells me all this stuff and so i was like oh wow and she's like you guys know anybody who can help me move so anyway we got to help her move wow her so we were like really busy this week but it was so cool yes just yes. it's so wonderful being able to be used by god and finding brothers and yeah. sisters in random places that you would never expect yeah you know yeah Coming out of the restroom in the grocery store. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's so that's fantastic. Yeah. There you go. Praise God! It was just so much fun, and and now we've made new friends, and uh -huh. it's just it's just wonderful. Yeah, it's yeah, I love hearing hearing this. Yeah. That we're just out and about and helping people. Yeah, yeah. And then Devon's in doing the back to Gloria. Back to Gloria. Back to Gloria. Get them all stuff. Oh yeah, it's fantastic. Uh. Oh. Go ahead. Robin. Um, yesterday we went to Cassidy and Charlotte's house. We got to play inside their pool. Ooh, all right, all right. That's fantastic. Naomi. And I got to put a pretty cute bunny Peter. Bunny what? Peter, all right. Uh-huh, yours, Peter Rabbit. Peter. Oh. He named, he named her rabbit. Rabbit, Peter Rabbit. Uh-huh. How cute. He, 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 and he nibbled on me. It didn't even hurt. No, yeah. Or it wasn't aggressive. It's just like a curious nibble. Yeah. All right. He liked exploring oh, the playhouse. Yeah. Heather. Um. Now we learned how to swim. She's working on it. She's oh, good. On swimming. She, good. She was swimming in that pool. <laughs> She's her. swimming in that. She's dog paddling. That's great. great. <laughs> That's Nicole. Great. God for our children here and our respective children. They're such a blessing. And mm -hmm. for Cindy and Katie, they're always so kind and thoughtful okay. and considerate. Yep. And that Miss Libby is here. We're glad mm -hmm. to have her here. Yeah, and that Mr. Jim and Josh are putting up the fence around my garden so the very <gasps> go. Mm -hmm. Yay! Yay! Oh, I gotta work on it today, don't I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I gotta get to it. Yes, and yeah. I got to see my grandson play baseball Wednesday night. It was just a scrimmage. It doesn't matter what it was, but this is the very first game that I have seen that entire team have self-confidence and know what to do with the ball when they get it. Good. They have a new coach, and for three months he's been coaching, and it's turning yeah. out great. Good. And my grandson had so much, I could just see. He knew everything to do. He pitches and he plays first base. And I asked him, were you nervous? He said, no. And he didn't look like it either. It was awesome. Good. It's just a blessing. Especially since <clears throat> I've been watching baseball so long and Katie and I <laughs> were getting Discouraged. frustrated. Because <laughs> the kids were not, anyway. That's now they're coming together. It's awesome. It That's was a awesome. Sunny. Okay. Yeah, I just praise God that I'm here for okay. number yes. one. Yes. Praise the Lord. I missed my family. Yes. Yes. Oh. I missed you. And I've got so many praises. Um, that I praise God that Libby was here this morning when I walked yeah. in the door. I saw her smiling face. <laughs> I praise God that she comes and we can be with her. And yeah. we're just a big family. Yep. And we're such a close-knit family, yeah. and we love each other so much. But I was at Walmart, uh, Dollar Tree the other day. That's where I do most of my shopping. <laughs> and I got a coughing spell. They just come on out of the blue, mm -hmm. and you can't quit. Mm -hmm. And right. it's so embarrassing because everybody, you know. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. But this, this young man, he was a tall, probably 30s or 40s, mm -hmm. I don't know. But he walked up to me and he said, would you like for me to pray for you? Oh, mm -hmm. wow. Awesome. And I said, would you? And he said, yes. And I reached out and touched his arm and he said, now? And I said, yes, I need it right now. Oh. And he did. We stopped and he prayed and I quit coughing. That's wow. Wow. I just thought that cool. he had the gumption yeah. to stand up for the Lord. You know, to, to yeah. he is a healer, yeah. and he deserves credit every time we turn around. But I don't usually give it to him, and I need to remember that he is he is God, he is Master yeah. over everything, over everything, everything. 
But I just thought that was so wonderful. And then it wasn't, but five minutes later, I met another lady that we were talking about Christians in church and little dogs, of course. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> the conversation. But it's so nice to find people that love God besides you. Yeah. They're, they're yeah. out there. They are. There's more of them than know. she knows. That's yeah. what I've been telling her. I said, yeah. they're everywhere. It's they're so everywhere. encouraging. Yeah. Good. That's fantastic. And it's so surprising. Mm -hmm. And what, yes, yeah. why, why do we praise yeah. the Lord? Because that's what we're called to do and everything and everything we say and do, give thanks unto the Lord. Amen. That's a part of seeing the Holy Spirit move when God's people are grateful and thankful for everything big and small that he does and he just continues to be faithful. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, God is in control. Amen? Amen. Amen. God is in control. I want to tell you today, I want to tell you today, you are loved, you are valued, you are special to God. Amen? And I pray today that you see how God sees you. He sees you. He's, you're the apple of his eye. He cares about you. He's concerned about your every need. And in life, we can feel so desperate at times, so alone, and we, we need the comfort, and it's sometimes it's just not there, or we don't feel it. But I want to tell you, it is there. He is here. He is wherever you are. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere at all times. And he wants you to know today you are valued, you are loved, you are special, and he wants the whole world to know that too. That God so loved the world, he gave his son as a sacrifice for our sin, because sin separated us from God. Sin separated us from getting into heaven. Sin separated us from, from being well, spiritually, mentally, and physically. The world was in, in uh, chaos, but Jesus brought peace. He brought peace. He didn't come into the world to condemn the world. He came the world into the world to save it. Amen. Is there going to be wars, room of wars? Is there going to be end times? Of course. There's going to be judgment. The world's already we're, apart from Jesus. There's judgment. Those who reject Jesus, there's this judgment already. But they don't have to come unto, under the wrath or the judgment of God. Because God is merciful and kind. And he's provided, he's provided a way. And who is the way, the truth, and the life? Jesus. Why did he, did he have to do that? No. He, he loved us. He didn't have to do it. He wanted to do, to do it. Because God is a just God. He's a perfect God. And if he says something, that's it's settled. Mm -hmm. So he said the wages of sin is death. That's settled. Sin separates from, from him, but the gift of God is faith. The gift of God is our Savior, Jesus Christ. Why did he do that? Because he valued you. He loved you. He's not against you. He's for you. And he wants the best for, for you. Well... There's a, a lot of things happen in the world that are just plain bad. There's a lot of things that have happened to me that's just not right. I know it's not right. It's Sometimes it's just tragic. But we live in a fallen world. And no matter what happens in this world, it's temporary. Because we, And through our faith in Jesus, those things which are temporary in the future will just seem... They won't even... You can't compare to the glory that we shall that shall be revealed in us when we see him face to face. Amen. But meanwhile, I would like you to know and everyone that's listening to the sound of my voice that you are valued, you're loved, and the good news is he would move heaven and earth just to get to you and to answer your prayer and to to be there with you. And at the the thankful new the good news is he already moved heaven and earth yeah. through Jesus. And he said in John, 
chapter 19, verse, uh, verse uh, 28, he was hanging on the cross, and he looked to his the, the disciple John, verse 27, he said, look, here's your mother, protect and provide her. From that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. Even hanging on the cross, Jesus was full of compassion and mercy, and he even thought about his mother. He, he thinks about everybody. He even hanging on the cross, he said, he said to all the people that were ridiculing him, mocking him, judging him, spitting on him, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Forgive them for everything. Why did he do that? Because Jesus knew what he was doing, and he was doing it, doing it for all. He was sacrificing himself for everyone. Why? Because in his heart, he knew he loved you. God loved you. Jesus loved you. He made the sacrifice for you because he values you because you are loved, you are valued, and what, why would I say that? Because you need to realize that and you need to take it, continue to take those steps to value yourself. Learn how much God values you, loves you, he accepted, accepts you just the way you are, mistakes and all. Nobody's going to be perfect here, but Jesus bridges the gap and makes us righteous and perfect in God's sight. Isn't that amazing? Yes. You are valued. You are loved. You are special to God. You are loved. So love yourself the way God loves you. And then when you do that, you'll be able to love others. And we can you can proclaim the good news and ministering that love. Because how... Are the people going to know know about Jesus because they have you have uh, your your you have education you education is not bad because you have a super knowledge of the word and you're just so Bible Bible you know everything about the Bible that's good but the thing that's going to settle it and set apart set it apart from everything else is that you you know that God loves you and that you love yourself that Jesus paid a high price and that you love and then you can transfer and love other people and be effective to be and be at peace and have joy in your heart because if you're, you're not really connected and you're not loving God or worshiping in the way you should or you're not loving yourself then you're short-circuiting that connection and you're not feeling the peace and the joy and the fulfillment that you should you should in this life until you meet him face to face so meantime learn how much and that's what I'm communicating today that God loves you he values you love yourself love other people be aware um, oh Jesus thought about his mother and then verse 28 after this Jesus that knowing that all was now finished he said I am thirsty I'm reading from the Amplified a jar, a jar full of sour wine was placed there so that they put a sponge soaked in the sour wine in a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and, and voluntary, voluntarily gave up his spirit. Verse 30, he said, It is finished. It is settled. God sent his son. Jesus carried out the plan and do, did what he needed to do so you could have access to God. So today you can come before God because why? Because he loves you. So love yourself and communicate and transfer and love other people because you have access to God today because you're righteous because the life is in the blood. Jesus gave up his life and in the Bible says God said when you know Cain and Abel uh, when Cain uh, 
killed Abel. God confronted Cain and said, hey, his blood speaks. That blood speaks, and he talks about how life is in the blood. So there's life in the blood, and Jesus gave up his life, and that very blood is the same blood that's powerful today and cleanses you from sin. So you, again, like I said, you can have access and you can come before God any time of the day. Amen? Amen. Love God. Love yourself. Love others. You are righteous. You can come before God without any feeling of inferiority, guilt, or sin. You don't have to. Well, what I, but I messed up not yesterday. Or I messed up before I came to church. Or I did something. Or I slipped. I said something I shouldn't do. That's okay. It's covered by the blood. Does that give me a license to sin? No. Somebody uses that. And they, they want to be all free and fancy free. Well, no, it's not. That's not for that. So you can real, not be in, under a weight of condemnation. And you can walk free. And be filled with God's glory knowing that God loves you and you can love yourself because it is finished. It was done 2,000 years ago and Jesus did what he came to do. Amen? Amen. It's finished. You can come before God feeling clean, feeling cleansed. You don't have to feel it. In, they have, sometimes some people have walk around with this feeling of inferiority or they feel like they're not good enough are constantly under a, a, a weight of gloom and doom. Well, I want to see it lifted today. I want to see everyone here free of that and, and connected to God and feeling his mercy, his love, and his compassion. And as he, you go out into this world like you went out and you met that lady, that they would see it and they would just be drawn to you because it's that love and that's compassion, that's that mercy that you're, you're, you know God loves you and you love yourself and when you love yourself you're confident and when you're confident you're bold and then you know that you know, it's not ego, it's not pride it's because it's you know that Jesus loves you you come before God you can walk with head held high uh, among other people and, and you can be about our Father's business Amen. but it all connects and it, has to do with loving God, loving yourself, and then loving other people. Because everything was finished 2,000 years ago, and he's commissioned the church to be about there and proclaiming the good news. Well, I got, I got, a, I got a ministry. You might say, I'm a prophet. I'm a, I can get out there and just tell everybody their faults and what they did wrong. <laughs> Sometimes in church, it's like that. Not here, but that's not going to do anything. Tell people, stop telling people what they already know. Yeah, oh, you better get right. I think they already know that they need to get right. They're just looking for an answer. They're looking, they're looking for a feeling of being accepted. Does that mean I accept? You accept their behavior? No, but you're not going to change them. The only person that's going to change them is the Holy Spirit. And the only thing that's going to convey the Holy Spirit is not your judgment, your condemnation. It's you're conveying the word of truth, the word of life, and convey, conveying those seeds that are the promises of God. And you, you convey that to, to people. Plant those seeds. And whatever you do, do it in love. And then you see that the seeds grow and you see change happen. And it's not because you did anything except step out and present the good news of the gospel. Amen. Am I making sense today? Yes. Absolutely. Love God. Love yourself. Love other people. It's finished. It's done. Jesus commissioned the church. And he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Share the good news. Amen. Romans chapter 5 verse 19 says uh, says I'm going to read out of the Amplified again for just as through one man's disobedience his failure to hear his carelessness the many were made sinners so that through the obedience of one man the many will be made righteous and acceptable 
to God and brought into right standing with, with him. Adam sinned in the beginning. Sin came into the human race. God had a plan. He sent Jesus. And through the obedience of one man, Jesus, who died, that wages of sin was death, but Jesus stepped in, took the penalty for that sin and all the sins that would ever be committed. He took it upon himself. He was innocent. He was a spotless lamb of God. And he offered himself and he took the sentence that was on you and me. He took it upon himself. So as Jesus became poor, we could become rich. As we could, he, 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 we were under a, a sentence of death. Jesus provided so we could be connected and connected into His life. For the dis, through the disobedience of one, many were made sinners. The careless, the many were made sinners. Through the obedience of one man, the many will be made righteous and acceptable to God, and brought Him into right standing with Him. You were, I know I said it several times, but I'm going to get the point across because <laughs> if you get this, it'll set you free and uh, save you from a lot of hassles, trying all these fancy programs. And if I do this, then the Holy Spirit will move. I was in one service uh, playing music, or it was when I first started, and the, the lady, so the, she was the leader and uh, piano player. And uh, she said, uh, well, we got these songs, but you can't plot the songs that way. And gee, everything has to be done this certain way. No, everything has to be done out of the heart. Yes, there has to be some order. You have order, but music is art. Music is mm -hmm. y y an expression. And there, there has to be some order. But she said, yeah, we have to play. Everything was so regimented. And she says, because sometimes the Holy Spirit shows up and sometimes he doesn't. Mm -hmm. oh. I want to tell you that's. I'm a little bit older now. <laughs> I mean, back then you. Oh, well, maybe they know more than I. But then you, after a while, you realize they didn't. They didn't know hardly as much as they should have known, because it's about the heart. It's about love. It's about. He's not looking in the church service at all the people's imperfections. He's seeing. He's seeing what he was. He has done. And he's waiting for people just to reach out in love and to, to love him. And then he wants them to love themselves. And he wants, his, he wants everyone to be connected to each other. And when you got that, the Holy Spirit just con continues to move. Through one man's sin, disobedient. Through one man's disobedient, sin. But through one man's uh, uh, obedience, there came life. And what, what does it say here? He brought... He brought the obedience that one man made righteous. It made them righteous through one man's obedience, and it, they became acceptable to God and brought into right standing with Him. Isn't that good news? You are brought into right standing with Him. Well, how do I do that? I just seem so far away. How do you do that? You call on Him. If you're feeling disconnected, call on Him and realize that God paid the price. Why well, I, I don't know God. I want to know God, but I've made so many mistakes. That's okay. Reach out and receive Him because the price has already been paid and it is finished. And all you have to do is reach out and receive. I don't know the Lord. Well, reach out and receive. Call upon Him, and you will you will be saved and you will become a child of God. Well, I am saved, and I keep making all these mistakes. Well. Call on him and realize that he's not down on you because you're going to suffer the consequences of your sins anyway for the wages of sin is death. To be carnally minded is death. So you're going to suffer either way. It's not going to be at God's hands. But if you make a, a, a choice today to recommit your life and to draw closer to him, he will show you mercy and he will show you, show you grace and he, he, will, he will wash away those sins. And he will take you from where you are, where you are, and he will take you and place you where he wants you to be. Isn't that good news? Amen. Through the obedience of one man, we became righteous. We've been become acceptable before God. 
but the law came to increase and expand the awareness of our trespasses, defining and unmasking sin. But when sin increased, God's remarkable, gracious gift, grace, his unmerited favor has surpassed it and increased all the more. So that as sin reigns in death, so also grace would reign through the righteousness which brings eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The answer to all our problems is Jesus Christ. What shall we say then? For chapter 6 verse 1, should we stay in sin and just continue? No, we should rise up and be everything that God's called us to be. Shall we continue in sin, practice sin as a habit, so that God's gift of grace may increase and overflow? That's kind of crazy thinking, right? <laughs> no, we don't do that, but we take we appropriate and we take advantage of that knowing that we take we not take advantage but we 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 uh, be, we we become a partaker of that divine inspiration that divine we per, become a partaker of a, that divine nature when we we don't take it for granted we don't misuse it but we appropriate it because we know we are flawed and we know we're imperfect and we don't let our sins separate us from communicating with him because again it is finished i'm coming in for a landing now certainly how can we how can we the very ones who died in sin continue to live in any longer or are you ignorant of the fact that all of us who have been baptized into christ jesus or baptized into his death we have therefore been buried with him i want to tell you today you've been buried with him through the baptism into death when jesus died he took your place. So when he died, you died mm -hmm. to your old old way of thinking, your old self. Well, I got all these thoughts. Well, that, that's another sermon. You renew your mind. But when, spiritually speaking, when he died on the cross, you died. It says, we've been buried with him through baptism <coughs> and the death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory and power of the Father, we too might walk abundantly, habitually in the habitually in the newness of life, abandoning our old ways. So today, abandon your old ways of thinking, of of a feeling of unworthiness, the feeling of insecurity, the feeling of feeling of unaccepted, or the feeling of not good enough or not loved. I want to tell you today, you are loved, you are valued. God loves you, and he's asking you today to love yourself. Amen? Amen. Because it's finished, God's done it, and he's just waiting for you to, to, to seek it out. Not seek it out, but meditate on his promises, because his promises, miracles are, are, are enclosed, and the miracles... That miracle of life is enclosed into the, in the seeds of his promises. Mm -hmm. Amen? So continue to plant those seeds of compassion and love, the seeds of healing and health and wholeness into your hearts and into the other hearts of other people. Love him. If you're going through a hard time and it's kind of pulling you away from him, grab onto the horns of the altar, draw close to him, love him. And then in the meantime, love yourself. Don't see all your flaws. See everything that God has done for you through Jesus Christ. Amen. He's bridged the gap. He's made you more than good enough. Stay humble and love other people. And you will all win people to Jesus and see the hand of the Lord move in a mighty way. Amen. 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 Father God, thank you for each person here today. I praise you. I praise you for all you've done i praise you for your purpose and your plan i thank you lord when tragedy strikes when we go through tests those tests can be our testimony and and even bring us further and closer to you and we can have a, even a bigger and a greater impact for you today i thank you father for showing each and every person here today and every person that's listening how much you love them and that they should value themselves and then and then and, and not be have a heart of criticism or judgment or condemnation but they should just get out there and love other people see the hand of the lord move in a mighty way and because 
soon and very soon we're going to see the king we're going to see you jesus and we're going to see you face to face and we want just to bring it in as many people as we can i thank you for again for ministering comforting healing strengthening each person and just helping them overcome and prevail in life and this and to press in to you father thank you for this today in jesus name everyone said amen, amen. and amen